there's only four cuts in the world. And we break them down into these four cuts. And I'm going to describe these cuts uh, a little differently. It's not what's happening to the wood. You, you hear a lot of uh, uh, terminology like uh, roughing out cut, shearing cuts, um, slicing cuts, different things that people use. And so it's, it's pretty confusing. Uh, what I'm going to describe, or my definitions, are going to be uh, what the cutting edge is doing. Okay, And so we're going to have only four cuts. We've got a I'm going to leave these on here for quite a while. I hope I don't have to destroy them. So we're going to leave a push cut, a pull cut, a scrape, and a shear scrape. Okay. Now let's draw a line straight across here and separate these into two categories. The push cut and the pull cut have bevel support. The scrape and the shear scrape do not have bevel support. So let's put over here. Okay. So the easiest way to get wood away, the fastest, easiest, is the push cut. And we're going to use the push cut probably, I don't know what percentage, uh, three quarters of the time, something like that. Uh, the pull cut is just going to use in a place that we can't reach with the push cut. The scrape and the shear scrape are, are shaping and finishing cuts. So the push cut's what we're gonna, gonna use most of the time. In the pushing cut, there's a number of things that, that will get us close to a sweet spot. And we're, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a sweet spot here that's working just effortlessly. And so flute is going to be pointing in the direction I'm gonna travel. So I'm gonna go from my right to left across the tool rest. And so the flute's gonna point in that direction. The twist of the flute is going to be about on a 45 degree angle. So if I lay a straight edge on the top of the flute, it's, the angle is about 45 degrees. It's not straight up and it's not straight over towards the wood. It's twisted on a 45 degree angle. Okay. And now one of the most important things that we need to start to think about is where that bevel is. The bevel, everybody talks about the bevel. What is the bevel? The bevel is that little real estate where that black line is on my, my wooden uh, mock-up here. Is from the heel to the sharp edge, there's a straight line, and it can be a little hollow ground with the, the uh, grinder, but there's a line between the heel and the toe that gives us the direction that the tool wants to go. And we're going to use that and let the tool go that direction. I'm going to look at that you need to know where that bevel wants to go, and I need it to be parallel to the tourist. So the handle has to be back on an angle like this. If I'm straight in, the bevel's not going to be on the tourist. I would just be cutting. And many people do a cut like that, and you really have to just hang on for dear life and kind of white knuckle your way through. Um, I want to show you uh, in this situation how little energy this takes and how little effort. In fact, I'm going to do it just with my fingertips. I'm going to turn the lathe on, and I wouldn't be turning like this in real life, but just as an illustration, I want to show you how much work I'm working, how much work it's taking me to do this. Okay? Fingertips again. effort on my body. It's real effortless. When I'm doing the pushing cut, let's use the big tool again. Let's say I'm going to push this direction. The sharp edge is facing the side grain. The sharp edge is leading the way. The bevel is behind and the handle is behind. That's my definition of a pushing cut. All right. This is a pushing cut. It's not my arm movements. It's not the direction that is going on the wood. It's the sharp edge leading the way that defines the pushing cut. Okay, So no matter what I'm doing with my hands, whether I'm pushing it away from my body or pulling it towards my body, it's still a pushing cut if the sharp edge is leading the way. Okay, So I'm going to do the same thing. The sharp edge is going to lead the way into the side grain. 
But instead of going all the way down and truing the side up, now I'm going to take small stages. The most important part of these cuts is the bevel support. Each time I make a little notch here, I'm going to start a new bevel support and work my way into the middle. Notch, 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 notch. Okay, so I need to get my face shield on here. Flute pointing in a direction I'm going to travel. 45 degree twist. Now I'm just going to take a small notch at a time. Right down in the middle. Now we're going to stop here just in a second. Take maybe one more cut. And let's talk about the dynamics going on. Let's make sure we totally understand what's at work here and why this is so easy. I mean, I can have a tin, eat a sandwich and turn a bowl at the same time here. All right. Now let's take our pencil again and show where the, the forces are happening. You can see that from there. The wood is going down, okay. The tool, the flute is pointing in the direction we're going to travel. We're always going to travel from the rim to the bottom. That's downhill to my grain orientation. My pencil trick again, right? And the last little shaving right at the tip of the flute is going to, let's do it in slow motion. If we can get a real tight close-up of this, it's going to peel off the shaving downhill on a 45 degree angle there's my pencil trick all right we've got the pencil trick on the pushing cut we've got the pencil trick on the pulling cut we've got the pencil trick on the shear scrape we're using the same technology if you will to make sure that we're cleanly cutting those fibers and we don't have to go back and sand okay